من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم شروع اللہ کے نام سے یہ جو بہت مہربان اور نہایت رحم کرنے والا ہے ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا ایب نارمیلٹیز آف ایڈرنو کارٹیکل سیکریشنس ٹل ناؤ وی ہیو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا ایڈرنل گلینڈ دا سنتھیسز آف ہارمونس ہاؤ دے آر میٹابلائزڈ ہاؤ دے آر ایکسکریٹڈ فرام دا باڈی then we discuss about the um, different functions of mineralocorticoids and the factors which regulate the mineralocorticoid secretion and then we discuss about the cortisol and the functions of cortisol and now we move on to abnormalities of the adrenocortical secretions first of all we'll discuss about hypoadrenalism also called adrenal insufficiency or Addison's disease. The different causes or the types of adrenal insufficiency, it can be primary or secondary in nature. Primary adrenal insufficiency means that there is some abnormality, some pathology which lies in the adrenal gland itself. Like for example, if there is atrophy due to autoimmunity, against the cortices it can lead to insufficiency or if there is injury to the adrenal cortex or if there is tuberculous destruction of the adrenal glands or if there is invasion of the adrenal cortices by cancer or secondary adrenal insufficiency means that there is impaired function of the pituitary gland the problem itself does not lie in the adrenal gland or the cortex itself but it lies at a level higher up uh, with the axis, pituitary. Uh, there might be an impaired function of the pituitary gland which fails to produce sufficient adrenocorticotropic hormone. And when there is insufficient ACTH production, then the production of cortisol and uh, aldosterone will also uh, be insufficient. And the adrenal glands may atrophy due to the lack of ACTH stimulation because uh, I told you that the hormones which are produced by the pituitary gland they are mostly trophic in nature they cause uh, continual stimulation and they cause growth of the respective target gland if the these hormones are not produced they can lead to atrophy of the respective target gland <laughs> like in case of adrenal gland uh, if there is insufficient production of ACTH. Secondary adrenal insufficiency is more common than primary adrenal insufficiency. Mostly the problem lies higher up in the pitch tree with the production of ACTH. What will happen? What are the different disturbances which will result if there is severe adrenal insufficiency. Three types of problems may result. One is mineralocorticoid deficiency, glucocorticoid deficiency, and melanin pigmentation can occur. Let's take them one by one. Mineralocorticoid deficiency. You know the mineralocorticoids are responsible for the sodium reabsorption and uh, secretion of potassium. So when sodium is not reabsorbed due to the deficiency of mineralocorticoids, the extracellular fluid volume will decrease, the plasma volume will decrease, which will lead to a fall in the blood pressure and decrease in the cardiac output leading to shock-like condition. And when the plasma volume decreases, the blood cell concentration will rise markedly uh, due to hemo concentration there and when the sodium is not reabsorbed it results in hyponatremia and when potassium is not secreted it leads to an elevated level of potassium in the blood plasma a condition called hyperkalemia which will result in serious cardiac toxicity weakness of the heart and contraction and development of arrhythmias and heart failure may result uh, along with a mild acidosis. And because of the glucocorticoid deficiency, 
the person, the uh, patient will not be able to maintain a normal blood glucose concentration uh, and the metabolic functions of the body will be depressed because of the reduced mobilization of fats and proteins from the tissues. Muscles, they become weak and the person is highly susceptible to the deteriorating effects of different types of stress and infections and this might lead to death. Regarding the melanin pigmentation, when the cortisol secretion is less and the ACTH production because of the lack of the feedback inhibition, there is a rise in the ACTH level and the melanocyte stimulating hormone. Uh, in the last lecture, when we discussed about the regulation of ACTH production, we discussed that ACTH has the MSH sequence in it so when the level of ACTH rises, uh, it, uh, it does possess some uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone-like activity. Normal negative feedback to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland is depressed, leading to an acute rise in the ACTH. And this acute rise in the ACTH can stimulate the formation of melanin by the melanocytes in the same way that melanocyte stimulating hormone does. So this melanin pigmentation in the mucous membrane, this melanin pigment deposition in the mucous membranes and the skin, and it is deposited evenly or it may be in the form of blotches, deposited especially, melanin is deposited especially in the thin skin areas such as the mucous membranes of the lip and the thin skin of the nipple leading to darkening of the nipple. And what is Addisonian crisis? Addisonian crisis means a critical need for extra glucocorticoids and the associated severe disability in times of stress. Like a normal person, when exposed to stress, there is an increase in the level of the glucocorticoids. But a person uh, with Addison's disease, uh, when F facing the stress, there is no rise in the glucocorticoid and when uh, the glucocorticoids do not rise, the body is not prepared to face the stress and this can lead to death. So this is uh, actually what a person with Addison's disease facing the stress uh, need, uh, there is a critical need for extra glucocorticoids. See here the person with Addison's disease, the various manifestations, the skin pigmentation, pigmentation at the nipples and friction areas so in the skin creases and the scars and the scars and this hypotension, muscular weakness, loss of weight, anorexia, vomiting and diarrhea can result and the person will develop a shock-like condition a collapse with a collapse so till now we have discussed that a person with <coughs> addition uh, adrenal insufficiency might result because of the problem of the adrenal gland itself or with the production of the ACTH and three types of problems will result one is glucocorticoid deficiency mineralocorticoid deficiency and melanin deposition. Now we move on to the adrenogenital uh, syndrome. Adreno, uh, it is due to an adrenocortical tumor which is occasional and secretes excess amounts of androgens and when there are excess amounts of androgens there is an intense masculinizing effect throughout the body. Androgens are basically the male sex steroid hormones. <coughs> if there is an uh, androgen producing tumor in a female, she might, she develops virile characteristics. There is growth of beard uh, with a deeper voice 
and occasionally baldness, especially if there is a genetic trait for baldness and there is masculine distribution of hair on the body and pubis. You can see here the ma when the male sex hormones are in excess, it will lead to a picture of uh, masculinizing effects uh, with masculine characters like growth of beard and a deep voice. Uh, and there can be a growth of clitoris to resemble the penis or the deposition of proteins in the skin and especially in the muscles which will give a typical masculine uh, look to a female. And what if the, there is an androgen producing tumor, adrenogenital syndrome results in a pre-pubertal male, a male which has not yet reached puberty. Uh, he will also develop virile characteristics, growth of beard, a deeper voice, occasionally baldness, masculine distribution of hair on the body and pubis, and deposition of proteins in the skin and muscles, and there is rapid development of male sexual organs. And if it develops in an adult who has already reached puberty, the virulizing characteristics of this syndrome, they are usually obscured by the normal virulizing characteristics of the testosterone secreted by the testes. Because the person has already reached puberty and under the effect of testosterone, the male the secondary sex characters have already developed. So the uh, similar effects are produced by the excess of androgens, so they will be obscured and it is often difficult to make a diagnosis of the syndrome in an adult male. The syndrome, this can be uh, diagnosed uh, by um, taking the urine sample and uh, having a look at the excretion or the level of uh, 17 ketosteroids which are the uh, metabolic end products uh, of androgen metabolism derived from the androgens and they may be uh, 10 to 15 times the normal. And if this excessive secretion, uh, excretion of 17 ketosteroids is seen, uh, then uh, the adrenogenital syndrome can be diagnosed. This is all for now. Thank you and take care.